speaker is, um, I have to be careful now, is it Miss Gmach, so Miss Jacqueline Semcha Gmach. Miss Gmach serves as project director uh, for USC Shoah Foundation's Testimonies of North Africa and the Middle East uh, and the Middle New Collection. She developed the initiatives for moral courage, a think tank of the Jewish Studies Department of San Diego State University. Ms. Gmach served for five years on the board of the American Technion Society, the American Magen David Adom, the Friends of the Israeli Defense Forces, the Encinitas County Library, KPBS in San Diego, a recipient of the 2008 Maria ben Marla Bennett Humanitarian Award, Friends of Magen David Adom, and was identified as a San Diego legend by the San Diego County Libraries and was honored by the, San, by the city's PBS affiliate and Union Bank as a local hero for Jewish Heritage Month. Her memoir, From Bombolini to Bagel, A Story of Two Worlds, was published by Geffen Publishing Israel in 2014. Ms. Mach will talk to us about four Iraqi Jewish testimonies, their life stories prior, during, and after World War II. Please, Ms. Gmach. I, I wanted to say thank you for everything, Mr. Sorani, and especially for calling me Mrs. Gmach. <laughs> Jacqueline Simcha Gmach. It's a name that I couldn't define in the United States for this last 30 years. I was whatever you want, Jackie, Gmach, uh, Similaha, whatever. But uh, thank you for this introduction. You're very welcome. And in fact, I will say more. You were a computer mentor for me for this project because I searched you a lot on the internet <laughs> to say, how am I going to develop this, pro this, this project one, right? that we have? Huh? This one? Yeah. yeah. What were you? Yeah, yes, it's this one. Okay. But you, you show me again your little. Uh, <coughs> Must be the name of Gmach that attracted us to this project. Ulai. Yeah. Me or Dea. Uh, <laughs> Uh, anyway, that we called uh, the testimonies from North Africa and the Middle East, the World War II era. And I want to thank all of you, the organizer here, for inviting me. Uh, I have a doctorate, but in physics and chemistry. That means I am glad that I don't have to present that anymore. <laughs> and, uh, and in my title, or the one that I have selected and you have accepted so gently, is stories to be told. That means I am already a senior. I want to tell stories. 20 minutes, I will do so. <laughs> you can do otherwise. No, that no. no. OK. No. That means, but I want, to, I want to take the time to introduce myself to you, because it could be any of you. That means here uh, I was born in Tunisia, and I probably call plus. Some people say a million over the world, France, Canada, and, and so on. That means what the Shoah Foundation wanted to do, and I'm sure you are all familiar with that, with the 53,000 plus testimonies uh, taken by Steven Spielberg, uh, they wanted to add what happened to the Jews of the Arab countries. I, I, do you know how the, the Shoah started? In fact, when uh, Steven Spielberg presented his movie, The Schindler's List, in uh, Israel, and you know, uh, by the end of the little image with this little girl in red, that I'm sure you can all visualize, uh, a Holocaust survivor came to him and said, this is very nice. You did a very good job doing those movies. But why don't you talk about us? Why don't you tell our stories? Why don't you come and ask me as a Holocaust survivor, when it happened to me. And that's the way Steven Spielberg 
oriented this direction to taking testimonies of survivors of the Holocaust. That means we are considering, of course, the relationship between the Muslims and the Jews in these countries. We are considering the history of those Jews being in those countries for thousands of years. And I will tell you that even today, I, I personally like to call myself, after 30 years in the United States, after being married to an Ashkenazi, an Arab Jew. That means we wanted to reflect the breadth and the experience of these regions to the unique purpose perspectives of those who survived there. That means you're all familiar. As I say, so many things have been said that, that I am going to pass fast and perhaps, if you want, tell your stories. We talk about the Mufti, we talk about the governments aligning with uh, Germany during World War II, and uh, I wanted to bring here today, more specifically, the story of Iraqi Jews. Uh, let me go back, if I may, for a few minutes about the USC Shoah Foundation and our collection. It is available in 52 countries. It is available as of today on behalf of TNAME, where we made the change, and we say we are not going to do essentially the Arab countries, but we are also going to do and to include Iran. We didn't include Turkey yet, but we didn't include Iran. That means I have to tell you that I spent two hours at a Farsi interview of a gentleman who lives in Los Angeles who is 93 years old and was interviewed by somebody else because I don't speak Farsi, but I do understand Farsi. I understand four words, Hitler, Israel, genocide, but it was fascinating to see the emotion of this man for three hours telling his own story. You know that those are simple images to get you familiar, and I, I know that all of you are already with uh, Jews of, of Iraq. I, I will call back again Mr. Stillman, Professor Stillman, to come and talk about the Farood. You <laughs> <laughs> I say, uh, you can come and talk again about the Farood. You have done that so beautifully that I even don't have to go back to it. <laughs> okay. We all know it was a pogrom. It was in June 1st and 2nd. And, uh, that means where I am, uh, we have seen this image also presented by Dr. Levy, no? Oh, Dr. Cohen, I think, it was Dr. Cohen. And this is also an image that you, which is uh, very representative of what's happening there, the mass uh, grave of the victims of the Farood in 1941. And, uh, but finding people who have lived those images creates something exceptional. It doesn't go anymore. Oh, yes. Uh, what do I do now? Uh, will you help me? I don't know. What, what I try to do, what I try to do is to bring you really a few minutes of uh, different interviews of four families. Uh, I want to, uh, our project is international, of course. Okay. I don't, don't start again, okay. if you don't mind. Uh, uh, it's international. I went to Montreal and I uh, uh, took the testimony of four people, Mr. Steven, uh, Steve Aker, who was in Baghdad, who was nine years old, saw the Farood, and talks a lot about it with a lot of emotion. When I started this pro pro project, I didn't think that people would be so emotional. But it was, I, I, I didn't think so, you know. I, I, I was in Tunis, we had the Germans, my father had stories about the Holocaust and things like that. But when you see the emotion, and you are going to sense it within two minutes of that man, it's absolutely going to touch you. Uh, the next one that we are going to see is Mr. Naim Shohet. And Naim Shohet was in Basra. He was listening to the radio. And he's saying it, I don't know if he's it, seeing it in this clip, but he said we, were, we knew what was happening. He was listening to the radio. He was in a very, very close relationship with the Muslim authorities. His family was very, very wealthy. He never had any problem. And he was able to go to 
India. I don't, I don't remember who presented. I, f I think it was you, right, uh, Professor Simon? Okay, the move, uh, the move to India. The other one uh, that you are going to see is Ruth Pearl. Or you are going to hear few, few of her, of her, of her words. And uh, I'm sure also we, we, we have uh, intellectuals here to talk about intellectual history. You were talking about intellectual history, right? That means we, we of Ruth Pearl, the mother of Daniel Pearl. And uh, I, I, I really think that when we listen to the, those voices, we have a way to understand history and to build history. It's from all those voices that you are going to define and the access of our uh, testimonies allows you, allows researchers as well as teacher uh, and students to do that. If you want, we can listen to that. I don't know how much time I am here. Um, I think what the that original means. is... If it's not working... <laughs> you have to click here, click here. <coughs> Yeah. That's what I wanted to try. You can go even. Okay. Okay. That that was my worry. That's the, uh, that was my worry. The original is on very low no, 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 no. The original <laughs> was very well. Okay, uh, I am sorry. Uh, we, we can try still or not. Or I can tell you what he is saying. But I think that looking at his emotion is something. He talked for almost three hours. He was uh, very teary, and it was interesting because he was talking with the language of a nine-year-old. <coughs> and uh, that, was, that was a very, very important. Of course, I, you have on the next slide, if I can go to the next slide. No, that's Mr. Chauvet. OK, I'm not going to read it to you, uh, but uh, he was, he was, he was uh, saying how it was difficult to drive his life after all. You know, this is not a presentation like the previous one, and that's the reason I was very careful about the title. I want to show what the Shoah Foundation can provide to you guys and can, in a, s in, in, in a certain way, justify some of the questions that you have already asked in this room. How did you know about Yunis Farid? About I can tell you that if you listen to the testimony of Mr. Naim Shoet, you are going to see that Professor Cohen is correct. That means that's, that's what uh, our role. I'm glad, I'm glad that you say this because some of people tell me, where do, where do you know? Where do you come from? This? Th that's, that's, what I want, that's what I want you to sense the Shoah Foundation. That's the reason I am not reading a paper, <laughs> but I am sending you a message that with your needs, if you go to the Shoah Foundation, you might have answers to your questions, or you might have points which will bring questions to yourself and how to deal with it. Okay, and I'm really sorry that I am expressing it instead of my witnesses, uh, of the witnesses that we have, like Mr. Uh, Shohet. And, uh, and the impact that that has done with the family. I'm going to go back for one second, if you are patient with me, to what you said. There was uh, uh, Han, Brand. Han Brand, to the, what Professor Brand, Dr. Brand said, their voices should be there. I think we heard an many, many voices of survivors of the Holocaust. And it's probably the right time, or oh, late, to hear the voices of the Jews from the Arab countries and the Middle East. 
I think it's becoming very important to hear our stories. It's very important with the claims conference. And I will tell you, I was only 40, uh, I was born in 1940. And I received the claim from the claims conference. I got my $2,500. I was a baby. And I think it's not about the money, but it's about the fact that it is happening, that we are identified, that we are recognized, that we are accepted. It's a very difficult process. I will tell you when I have to say thank you uh, to uh, Chaim, Dr. Sadun, Chaim Sadun, and to Mark Cohen from the Princeton University, and again to you, who have me directed that, because we had to take the Shoah Foundation protocols, regulations, and adjust them to another one. We didn't have a ghetto. Our papers uh, didn't, didn't, could not mention ghetto. They had to mention Lahara, for example, which is the ghetto where the Jews of the Arab countries were. Roof Pearl, we have many mothers and fathers, and we probably have only mothers and fathers in this room. When you listen to this lady who was eleven, uh, seven, nine years old, saw the Farood, saw the knives coming through the window and killing people, and who tells you I couldn't sleep for years and years, and end up by being, having a son who is beheaded, and the mother telling you this story. And I know it's, it's uh, I hate to say it, but you know he was beheaded twice, according to his mom. They cut off the first time, the head didn't fall, they put back the head in place, and they did it an another time. This is a story. This is a story. But you have the responsibility. As I say, I am physics and chemistry. You have the responsibility to take those elements and to make them work for the world, as well as the Shoah Foundation has that responsibility. There you, you can see here uh, one of our photographs with uh, a son. Judea and with uh, uh, Danielle. And you know, she did a lot of work because you all know that he was a violinist and she created the Daniel Pearl Foundation where I was then uh, the executive director of the cultural center, the Jewish community center and has developed the Jewish music festival. And uh, we created as of today, close to 600 concerts over the world uh, in memory of Danielle. Here I put you question marks because what I want you to sense is that the Shoah Foundation and those testimonies give you the chance to discover the life of one person and probably the history. I'm going to say just two words about the gentleman over there. Moshe Sadeh was born in Egypt, tells me his story, and he was 17 in uh, Cairo, and he, is, he had blonde hair, big blue eyes, as you can see on this photo, and wanted absolutely to be involved when in Cairo during the war with the Hagana. And the Hagana said, we cannot use you. He said, why can't you use me? He said, because you look too much like a European guy. We cannot use you in Egypt. It doesn't work. And when he came here in 1948, he had the same situation. He was rejected, uh, not rejected, he was not accepted as an Egyptian Jew to work for the Haganah because they say they cannot identify you as an Arab. With Mr. Naim Katan, I'm sure you are all familiar with it. We did interview in a different language. I just want to finish there and tell you that the few selections that we did within the last two years, I tried to identify people who had to be in their 80 plus plus or their 90s. It's amazing to see their memories and how they recall everything. Um, 
I selected them through their skills and their experience. That means if you have a chance to go and listen to Naim Katan, he was talking like his book, like a, like a writer. If you inter when I interview uh, Armand Becassis, a very well-known scholar in France, and uh, final, what's the word? Uh, uh, I lost, lost it. Not an intellectual. Um, with the man, uh, a, a biblical scholar. I'm sorry. Uh, as a biblical scholar, his presentation was really about his emotion and his neshama. And I thought that it was absolutely different. We interview uh, Mr. Albert Memi. Albert Memi, uh, who talk about anti-Semitism the same way that he was writing his book. That means I, I don't want to apologize. I don't want to apologize for making a different presentation. I want to, to just confirm to you that the Shoah Foundation, like Yad Vashem, is just an organization here to serve you and to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir.